you know? And I think that's where it kind of needs to go back to, you know, where, you know, a man is um, courting a woman and, and showing her, you know, how much he appreciates her and wants her and loves her or wants to be with her. And I feel like what's happening now, and again, I've only been in the world for a few months, is they have this mentality right off the bat that there is someone else. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like there, there could be someone else. That is they're, it that they're the prize? Yes. We talking deep here. Yes. We about to get into it. Oh my God, that the, that the man is the prize. The man is the prize. Yes. I'm talking loud. Yes. That is so true. Like they've taken it off of the woman. The woman. We read the scriptures. We look in the Bible that oh. the man becomes more infatuated with himself. Y'all. You see, here's the thing. I knew this man was a panderer, but what I did not know is that he was also a blasphemer. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. You see, they they are willing to go so far just to be um, you know, on the women's accord or just to please the woman's feelings and emotions and it's not the truth. You know, the thing is I don't even want to go into that. Like I don't even want to take that route, but trying to use religion right biblical teachings and turn it around and make it seem like oh you know well they said that you know men were going to become lovers of themselves uh, just just out of common sense okay let's just this is not about you know being religious or anything like that this is just about common sense when that book is speaking in the terms men more times it is talking about people as in man as in flesh and if you want to talk about people being lovers of themselves, the the people that I see that have become lovers of themselves over a span of time more than anybody else has been women. Women have been so selfish, self-sufficient. We don't need nobody. You know, can't nobody rely, uh, you know, can't nobody tell me nothing. I don't need to rely on nobody. I could do bad all by myself. I don't need a man. I'm better than a man. I'm over a man. So let's not even go there. Okay, but I'm done with him. Let me. I don't even. I'm sorry. I don't even want to see. Let's let's look back at Tia. Okay, let's look at Tia. Tia said, okay, that she is now in the dating world, and she noticed that men are no longer courting women. You know, they're not treating women like you know they were may, maybe basically in the '90s, where it's like, baby, baby, I love you. You know, here's here's some roses, here's some flowers. You know, trying to shower them, trying to prove that they are worthy to be in the presence of a woman, right? And so she's saying that she wants to, she wishes that it was, um, you know, back in those days or back in that time where men were courting women. Now, I want to strongly start this off by saying I do not know uh, verbatim the reason why Tia and her husband got divorced. All I know and all I can go off of is what she said. And what she said was that she graduated from her marriage, meaning that she got to a place that she no longer felt like the two of them were on the same playing field or the two of them were no longer you know, seeing eye to eye, whatever it was, she feel like she outgrew. She feels like she outgrew the relationship. She outgrew the marriage. These are, this is her words, not mine. Okay. So for anybody who's going to come in the comment section and defend this, these are not my words. This is her words. And what I've come to find is that there's a lot of women who, um, you know, talk tough, and then when it comes down to it, when it comes to the nitty gritty, they uh, they realize that maybe what they thought they could handle or what they thought was better out there, they forget that what they had at home was already good. Not only good, but better than the options that they will now have in the dating market. Let me clarify. There's a lot of women who are in relationships. It's like, oh my God, you know, it's so boring. You know, I'm he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. And, you know, they're on social media watching other people's lives that they only get a happy snippet of. Okay? They only get to see the flick of when everybody's smiling. They don't get to see the behind the scenes. They don't get to see the stress. They don't get to see the turmoil, the arguments. 
They're comparing themselves. Oh, well, how come he doesn't look at me like that? How come he doesn't do these kind gestures? There are women who are mad at their man right now because they saw somebody else's husband on social media, you know, laying out the roses and rose petals and, you know, the bottle of champagne and stuff like that. They don't know that the woman is the one who set it up and she just pretended that it was him for y'all on social media. Let me, let me say that one more time. There are women who are mad at other, uh, you know, they're mad at their man because they see that other people are on social media. This man done put out, you know, bouquet of flowers, done spelled her name on the bed with the rose petals. He did all this stuff. And they're like, my man is not romantic. How come my man doesn't do that? Where'd the romance go? He doesn't even do that stuff for me. Not realizing that the woman in that relationship is the one who set it up and made it seem as though her man did those things for the clicks, the views, the likes on social media. And women are eating it up all the time and, and falling for it. Now mad at their man for something that another man did not even do. I'm just being honest. Then they're, you know, so big, bad, and bold, talking about they don't want to be in a relationship no more. The spark is gone. They could find somebody else. Run out of that relationship thinking that they're going to jump, you know, right into the arms of their knight in shining armor, the person who has been, you know, waiting for them, the person who wants to be with them, the person who is going to be, you know, this, that, and everything for them. Only to find out that now you're in this space that this person don't know you like your husband did. This person is not looking at you with care and love in his eyes. He don't care about you. She even went as far to say that, you know, they automatically are thinking that there's, there might be somebody else or somebody better. And because there's a strong possibility that that might be true. And it does not mean that I'm, you know, demeaning you as a person. It does not mean that he's looking at you like you're nothing. It means is that he wants to see where he's investing his potential as, uh, you know, his, his potential, especially because of the fact that you were in a situation before and you walked out of it because you were no longer happy. So this man has to now see you and say, well, are you somebody who is just, who can't, who can't be pleased? Is it a possibility that I can try to bring you the moon and you're going to tell me that's not enough with the stars and the sun too? Is it that you cannot be pleased? Because I think that we have this conversation a lot. Like women, oh, you know, they're not happy anymore and everybody deserves to be happy. True. But there are some women out there who just cannot be pleased. And I mean in every way. In every alley. Emotionally, physically, intimately that brother could be putting in all that work and she gonna be still talking about i don't know i just i just feel like he like okay <laughs> i'm gonna need you to learn your body okay i'm gonna need you to learn what you you know because this is you putting a burden on me you acting like it's my fault i know it ain't me There is nothing wrong with with men being in a space that they are now trying to uh, they're 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 trying to be proactive in situations, making sure that they're not going to be fooled, bamboozled, hoodwinked, because they're so blinded by who you are, or how you look, or your representative self. They want to see how you're going to act when, when they say no. They want to see how you're going to act when you get mad because they want to make sure that they are making the proper investment. Because nowadays, things have gotten from bad to worse. Instead of looking at the men and saying that there's a problem with the men, maybe we need to take a look at our sisters and be like, hold up, what y'all doing to these men out here that they acting like this? Because it's not off of their own merit. Before, when men were doing, uh, you know, putting their coat down on the puddle so a woman can go, go walk over it and stuff like that, the women were being ladies. Their energy alone almost commanded that decency and respect. We have a lot of women now trying to, you know, borderline be a thought pocket. <laughs> they trying to dabble in that, you know, aspect and then still try to be treated like a lady 
And he like, no, nah, I could see through that. What you think? You could fool me? You can't fool me. I'm looking right at you. We have to be honest with ourselves first. There's some women, and I'm not speaking for Tia. I, again, I don't know her situation. The only thing that I know is that she said she graduated from her marriage. Now, I don't know if that is a situation where they had deeper rooted issues and they were just trying to be respectful or if it was definitely like how a lot of these women do. Oh, you know, I'm just unhappy and it's just not going there for me. Be with somebody for 10, 15, 20 years and then just call it quits. Just because they want to go back to the streets because the streets look more fun. Or they, they have this epiphany. Oh, I never lived by myself. I never got to do this. I never got to do that. And all of a sudden want to do it. It could be a, a plethora of different things. But there's other women who are going to watch this and who are listening to this. And you see, sometimes you have to, it, sometimes it's not um, easy, especially when you go through a lot of uh, certain things in your relationship, especially when it's you to blame. Okay, take the other person out of it. As a woman, woman to woman, I'm talking to you. Sometimes, you know, you want to look at your partner and be like, oh, you know, well, he does this and he does this. Let's dial it back. Because sometimes when we get to the root of that situation, it's you. Not all the time, not every time, nor am I condoning for you to stay in a relationship that is harmful to you physically. Okay, I'm not saying that. But sometimes y'all be in some mess up situations in your relationship. And if you, if you rewind the tape and take some notes, you realize that you have a part to play as to why you and your partner are so distant, why you feel the things that you feel. And instead of thinking that you're going to go out there and run into the arms of somebody else that's going to grab you up and scoop you up and then that you the best thing since sliced bread, you need to fix what, where you at and what you have. Because remember when you thought that he was all that in a bag of chips? Maybe you don't see it, but he still is. Remember when, you know, you was like, oh, he's a commodity and you was going to your girls and telling him that he still is. And in the beginning, you know, the woman is so, so liberated when she's the one that, you know, wanted to have the divorce and she's so this and, you know, she got her, the sisterhood and her friends clapping for her and supporting her. But in the long run... The man could easily find somebody else, have a happy relationship and move on. And the women be hurting and crying. And all guys do is get with you, take you for a ride, drop you back off. Because they don't want to deal. And you have to think about that. Stop thinking about your temporary feelings, your temporary emotions. Oh, you know what's going on right now? Think logically which is not very easy for a lot of women to do because we are more emotional, but it's important to think logically. Dial it back. Try to repair. A lot of people don't want to repair. They want to just throw it away and get something, to, get something new and start over. But you see, in that repairing process, if it works or if it doesn't work, you see the, the, the work that you have to go through the depths that you have to go through to try to repair is going to reveal you to you. Reveal what you have to work on to you. So that even if you step aside or even if he's like, no, nah, I don't want to do this or it's not working or whatever. You know that you have the tools to have the longevity. And most of the time, the people who, the women who take the time to sit back and repair and rebuild, they don't move on to anybody else. They end up thriving and saying, wow, we could have gave up and I'm glad we didn't. Wow, look at how beautiful our relationship. I'm glad. This is my opinion. Okay. This is my opinion. Guys, this is my opinion. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you. Oh,